Hey, hey, it's W5HRO. It's been a little while. Uh, I was cleaning up the shack and I decided to come out here and clean up the workstation. I cleaned up the garage. This thing, I had stuff thrown all over the floor and I finally got around to cleaning it up. It's taken me all summer to get to it. Now I completely cleaned up my old little temporary workstation that I put together a year ago when I first started working on this stuff. I put new towels on. I threw the old ones away. They were just filthy. So uh, starting fresh here. But I started taking apart this amper. I'm starting to loosen all the screws. I got these guys all loose, you know. I got screws loose here, and I'm going to loosen this one next. I'm going to take, I'm going to loosen all the screws in the top of the bottom. I'm going to try to see if I can just lift all this stuff out of here to get it away from the cabinet. I may have to disconnect a couple wires here and there. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, I do have the new, uh, the new set of tubes for it. And when I said they were the short versions, I've had these tubes for a while, and I... I, you know, I never I never worked on TV back in the old days. I never worked on TVs. I worked on these things, though, because I used to work on a lot of these things. I used to modify these things for sea beers, and I used to use them on the hand bands, too. And um, I, think, I, I never had one of these 351s, but I had one of the other ones, a couple of the other pals, and then, of course, the VFO things, and so forth and so forth. But they made a 750 model, which has got, uh, which has, uh, one tube driving two, then those two tubes are driving another two. It's like one in series with two, and then then two more in series with those two. So, but it's a different setup, and this is just one driving three. This one's a little different, but uh, but I was looking, and I uh, I guess maybe in television sets these six LF sixes and these sweep tubes were a lot taller because I'm not I was never a TV repair guy, but I worked on lots of these you know uh, amplifiers. With these compactron tubes like this and i guess these were the shorter versions i guess these things always had the short ones in them because i'm looking these things are the same size so i will not be able to shift this thing over i thought these tubes were shorter but i guess they're not so i guess the other the, the standard 6ls 6s probably stick out about that much farther so i guess you have to use the short versions in these old amplifiers the other ones won't fit but i'm going to take this thing all apart i'm going to make put a bigger loading cap in here it's going to have a bigger tuning cap i'm going to modify the coil if i have to drill a hole to select it which i'm probably going to have to do to make it work down to 20 meters if i can make it work i'm going to try i'm not going to drill any holes in yet i'm just going to i'll play with the length of the coil and i'll add i'll put a bigger one in there and just see what it does you know first before i before i go any farther to make sure it'll work down that far i know i can make this thing work down on 17 meters it's just kind of go down to 20. I think I can do it, but it's probably going to take a, 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 at least a coil that has it like at least maybe two taps on it, maybe three, to get everything to work from the high end to the low end. Because also, these things were designed to work from 28 uh, megacycles, which is, you know, megahertz, all the way down to uh, uh, the bottom. I think it was 21, so it was from 28 to 21. Well, 28, well, 10 meters goes all the way up 29 and above it, right? So... Uh, this thing was going to have, probably have low power on the higher bands. I mean, not on the higher bands, on the higher part of 10. So it's going to, I can kind of tell by looking, this coil, this is actually a little bit bigger than, because I remember a lot of CB amplifiers, and I, I can tell you right now, this coil is a little bit, a little bit larger than most. So this thing, that's why it's probably only rated up to uh, 28 megahertz. It probably, it started... The, the power probably started dropping like a brick as you got above that, so I can fix all that. I'm going to make this thing work all the way from 29, whatever, down to uh, down to 20, if possible, down to uh, 14, whatever. What's the bottom end of, of 20? Is it 14, 150? I think, something like that. I can get to work down to 17. I know that's not going to be a problem. It's just, can I make it work all the way down to 20? Because the issue is, is the uh, the input tuning to this first stage and stuff, and you know, I, and it, or the coupling between the, the the first and the second stage, basically this between this one and these, it's got a fairly broadband tuned circuit in there, right? I'm gonna have to make it broader to get to cover 17, and a lot broader to make it for 20. So I I think I can make that circuit broad enough to where it's broadband from one end to the other where I need it, but I'm not positive. I might have to put a uh, maybe a selectable capacitor, maybe like two 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 different ones that. Maybe if I do have to add a switch in here to increase the inductor so I can tap it, you know, 
uh, so I can select it in a couple, two, three places. Maybe I'll get one of those dual, those dual, that's got the dual wafers and I'll connect the other one to like a, maybe a little relay that switches capacitors or something between two different capacitors. I'll figure it out. It won't be too difficult. This should, this should be a pretty simple, uh, simple, uh, project. I just got to take everything out of there. I'm going to replace what I can, modify where, where I can, you know, where, where I can on it. And, uh, Oh, by the way, this was the earlier version of the 351. The last few models they made of this, they drilled one more hole right here for the A, uh, the AM and SSB switch. This schematic is the later uh, the later version of it. Uh, this amplifier did not have that switch in these two other components. It was basically, they just had a delay in there, which is what I, I don't know if I said it in that first video or not, if I mentioned that. Maybe I mentioned it on my website at one point. In time. Oh, by the way, W5HRO.com is back. I, like I told you last time, I found the new host. And I put it there. I decided to go ahead. It wasn't very hard to import the other, you know, get, I installed the new Xferno version on there and, uh, I, uh, I, and I imported all the posts and updated them. So it's, but it's better than it was before. Everything works a lot faster now because my old host was causing me a problem. He kept limiting the resources. So if you clicked on the photos, they wouldn't blow up in a different size. And they would, they blow up in the bigger sizes, but it took them forever to load. It's like they slowed down the download. Now the new place, it's, it's just, they open immediately like they used to. So that part's been fixed on my website. So W5HRO.com is back. But I was looking at this supply. Uh, I got to order the, uh, I thought I had a couple hundred mics out here in the garage, but I used those on my, uh, you know what I used them on? I used them on the Keepalai supply for my homebrew transmitter for the negative peak limiter. I thought I had a couple hundred, a hundred mic caps, 500 volters still left, and I actually used them on that, so I forgot. But this has got the original components. I mean, I was looking this thing over. It still has all the original parts in it. And I was wrong last time. They didn't use, these are actually, both are bipolar. I was thinking this metal can was, was an FET for EC, but that dawned on me. FETs were so sensitive back in the day, especially for CBers, they weren't going to, the relay snap it around. Those, it would have popped those, if that was an FET, it would have probably wiped it or they would have blown it up doing something stupid, you know. So those are actually bipolars, but that's not even the, that's actually the keen transistor for the relay. The other little small black black one is just a 3904 for an RF amplifier. They used a 3904 for the RF amp. Crazy, but that's what they did. So anyway, um, I think I can improve that. I can put one of those little 20 dB broadband amps in there or something, just replace it maybe. Or I could just put a 3904 back in there. I really don't want to do that. That's just a noise amplifier. But on some of the uh, the higher, this is going to be all, used on the higher bands. So you know, having a little bit of, a little bit more sensitivity on some of the uh, receivers is better. You know, especially some of the old transceivers. They're, they're, the sensitivity on the higher the higher bands were kind of lacking in a lot of them. So it could use a little broadband amp there probably. But anyway, I just need to broadband this circuit up to try to get it to work all the way down to 20. This part's not a problem, man. I can make the, this Pi network. It'll, it'll, it's easy to modify that to make it work down to 20, but it's going to take probably an extra switch. I can probably find one of the other switches that matches these knobs, but it's the one that's got, you know, it's, it's got the things so you can get a hold of it and you can go click, click, you know. I, could just, I probably don't need more than two positions, maybe three at the most. Maybe an extra one for the 10 meter, for the higher end of 10, for the down to the lower end of 10. And then, you know, the 10 one should work all the way down to 15. And then maybe click to another one for 17 and another one for, for 20. So maybe, maybe a three position switch is what I'm thinking. Two or three position switch. Two or three taps is all it's going to take to modify this thing. Because this thing will work from 28 all the way down to 21, just like it is now. But I can tell by this coil, it is a little too large to make it work all the way up to 29, almost up to 30 megacycles. So it's going to have to be modified. So it'll have to have, it'll have to be a shorter tap because I am going to increase the value of this cap. So it'll need to be a shorter tap anyway. I could spread this coil apart real far and make it work up higher, but I don't want to do that. So I'll figure it all out. I may just go to the, I may just go to the hardware store and get some of that copper wire the same size and just one, make it wind one bigger than this and just tap it in two or three places and do it that way and just replace this one. It might be easier. But uh, that's where I am on this. I'm going to get this thing modified. Oh, and, uh, and say, hey, man, at your local uh, auto parts store, 
VHT, this black wrinkle finish plus for engines. It's the same thing. It's the black wrinkle finish paint for the antique cabinets. I'm going to uh, just clean this thing down because I really don't have to because uh, the wrinkle finish paint is going to cover any blemish or any any marks. I just need to uh, probably take acetone and wipe. I need to wash this thing off good. Take some acetone, wipe it down good. Maybe in a couple places, take a scotch Bright pad. And there's one little rough spot there. Just kind of get the rough spots off. Just lightly maybe rough it with a scotch Bright pad. Acetone it down. Take it in the backyard and I'm just going to spray it. Let it sit out there and bake a while. Maybe even stick it in the oven after it's almost dry, maybe to harden it good. But the key is, what you do on these things is let the can of paint sit out in the sun just for a little bit. Get the can warm, not real warm. Don't stick it in hot water in the sink. You'll get it, you'll super liquefy it. Just let this thing sit out in the hot sun and start shaking it real good. Leave it out there for a little while. Take it back out of the sun. Let it sit for about five minutes. Then let this thing out in the hot sun and then come out and just start spraying it and it'll work great. So that's what I'm gonna do on that, the, the lid for this thing. So I should have this thing modified. It shouldn't take me that long. I just, I'm not gonna work on it right now. I'm gonna, tomorrow, it's, it's Saturday here. It's the last day of July. Tomorrow's August 1st, and I'm gonna go out in the, which is Sunday, and I'm gonna go back in the shack tomorrow, and I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna clean it up. I need to, I had, I had everything, I had this stuff all over that desk in there, all my tuner parts, and what's happened is, I've, I've had to delay my uh, my 80 meter vertical and everything, and I've got it all up. The ground, most of all the ground rails are laid. I'm gonna probably lay a couple more after the ground softens up some. The ground right now is hard as a rock. I could probably turn the sprinklers on and get it soft, but I'll just wait till it rains a little bit. Then I'll lay the last two or three that I was gonna add it before I start using it this radio season. But the antenna's up. The problem is the big aluminum box I ordered from the uh, vendor, which is a Hammond box. It's a bare aluminum box, a big one. It's gonna have all my, my tuner parts, my remote tuner parts inside of it where the cables are gonna to connect to. It's gonna be mounted right at the base of my antenna with the U-bolts, like I'm gonna modify it for. Well, there's like, it's a eight, it's taken Hammond eight weeks to get those things out. The original lead time was like four weeks. I was supposed to have it like over a week and a half ago. It got delayed until August 13th. So it's gonna ship the week after next. So hopefully it won't get pushed out again, but uh, looks like US manufacturing's having a trouble, even Canada, so it's, it's pretty bad right now. There's a there's a there's a, another uh, what do you call a supply shortage of everything, you know what that means? Inflation's inflation's coming. I got a bad feeling we're probably going to see late 1970 numbers all over again, because the the similarities of what happened then and what's happening now are about the same, you know. The difference was unemployment was bad, but right now people aren't going back to work because they're staying home to getting the extra money, right? So that's that's the same thing as unemployment. And the government's having to pay everybody their salary, you know, which is crazy, but I won't get into that. But uh, so uh, anyway, um, that's as far as I'm going to go on this tonight. And uh, I'll uh, do another video soon as soon as I get this thing all taken apart. And um, the main thing is I got to take it all apart because I'm going to wash the cabinet down. I'm going to wash the front. I'm going to put a coat of wax on the front because I can actually make these, these old panels shine. I take that new finished car polish and I wipe it on there and I let it dry and I polish it off and I do it like two or three times and I rub it. I can actually make this, you would be surprised what I can do to this thing. These things look dull and kind of ugly. I'll make this thing shiny. You watch what happens. I've done it before. I can completely transform the cosmetic appearance of this thing and you'll go, wow, looks like a different amplifier. So anyway, I just got to order these two capacitors. I'm going to put the higher voltage three amp diodes in here and I'll probably change some of the resistors and I'm going to change these two relays. This is all going to come out of here. And uh, I have the uh, brand new ceramic. These were, these came from China, but I've had these for several years. I, I bought them because I was going to use some of these tubes for something else and I just didn't get around to it. So I have the brand new sockets and these sockets that are in here are crap. They're old and they're corroded. You can even see all the lock washers behind this. The nuts on these switches are corroded. These screws here are all corroded. So I've got a, I got a lot of cleaning to do. So that's uh, I think that's all I have for now. Uh, one thing I was looking at, I was comparing this thing to the uh, the old Palomar Skipper amp because it originally had the 8950s and it had one tube driving the three. Then they went to the 6LF6s like I'm gonna modify. So I'm actually using this circuit. I'm seeing if I can maybe take a little bit of it, 
to maybe improve this in a way, or I'm just seeing what they did to get a better feel for what they actually did here with this one and why. And I've already determined that to this high and low power switch is gonna go. What I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna make this high and lower power switch to AM and sideband switch. And it's just gonna be high power. There's no, because whenever you have these low powers, you're basically, de when you switch it to low power, these things are somewhat detuned and it's not good to run them that way. You're better off setting a thing for one power level, getting the drive level set right and just leave it like it is and not worry about it. And you don't want a low power because it can, it can cause problems because it does detune it to a certain extent when you go to low power on these. So not a good idea. So that's the way I get the AM sideband switch by just eliminating the high low power on this. So uh, that's how I'm gonna, but I'm gonna put the, see how they got the Zener? I'm gonna connect all these, these this together, these cathode here at the, uh, the, the uh, input to these chokes. It's all gonna be like a one big, I'm probably gonna put a 50 watt Zener in here. One, that's what they did on the, uh, the, the, the PAL 750. They had one 6.8 volt, uh, uh, the 50 watt Zener doing all, all uh, was it one, two, three, it was, was it? Yeah, it was five of the tubes. The 750 had five tubes where this one only has uh, four. So uh, that's what they, uh, you can see what, I don't know if I told you before that there's actually a tube missing on this circuit. It's actually, see, it's actually, they just didn't want to draw it in there. They just said it's there. So there's an extra tube there. But I think they originally tried to design this for the uh, to, for one tube driving four, and they realized that one tube was not going to drive four. The matching, it was just, just going to kill it. I think even three tubes is borderline. Two tubes is better, but they're driving three. And if you had it, some people I think used to add another tube in here, but this is a, that's a bad idea because it's not. This tube will not drive four of these things. The the input capacitance to four of those is going to be way too high. So that's why on the 750 amp, they had the one driving two, then those two driving another two in series with them, instead of all having all four of them in parallel, because it's, unless you had two tubes, you could put two tubes driving four tubes, but you can't do one tube driving four, it won't work that way. It will, but you're gonna, it's, it's gonna, you're gonna have a problem with it, and you're gonna lose power. It's, it's gonna be very inefficient doing that. You might get a little more power out, but it's not gonna be what it normally would be if it was done right. So, uh, so I think that's all I've got for now. That's basically what I'm doing. And uh, I'm gonna first take this thing all apart, clean it up, polish the front, replace the bad components. And I'm gonna, uh, I decided I'll just take the black wrinkle finish paint and I'll paint this thing and it'll make it look good too. So, so I guess that's it. Uh, I'll uh, do another update to this thing uh, when I'm ready. And I should have another update on my homebrew AM transmitter soon too. I just, I just need to get her. I'm just going to finish cleaning up the shack tomorrow. Probably another couple of days to get it all completely finished. I got to hang my big U U.S. map on the wall again over the, uh, above the desk, the station desk there. And, uh, I'm going to get that all done and I'm going to, uh, button up the transmitter to get the rock and just use it and hook it up to the antenna and we'll see what happens soon. So that's it for now. This is W5HRNO.